sustainable brand. Um, we have been working on it for four and a half years now. And um, our philosophy is trying to make less garments that last longer, that have a classic element with a twist, but um, with a really strong sort of sustainable um, thought process behind them. So the three um, pillars that we think about all the time when we're going into work every day is wearability, um, luxury, and sustainability. Yeah, and for me, emotion is a big part of it. Um, it's why I do what I do. I think I try to make clothes that um, re the wearer relates to in an emotional way. So, um, I started out in the industry, um, first of all, I got a degree in accounting um, in Seattle. I was living in Seattle at the time, um, and there wasn't a lot of fashion in Seattle, so I had to do a lot of digging to find, you know, teachers and mentors, um, which I did outside of my accounting studies. I learned pattern making um, from an a old, an ex-Dior um, pattern maker. Um, who taught me sewing and cutting and really the traditional ways of tailoring. Um, and I went on then to um, FIT and further my education for a year. And then I went to Polymoda um, in Italy to, you know, get more um, experience um, around tailoring um, and ended up in Paris um, working for Guy La Roche uh, for a year before coming back to New York and doing odd jobs before finding, founding my own company. Um, my journey is a little different from Michael. So I come from a styling background. So I used to work at a magazine, actually a few magazines along the way. Um, so my feel for fashion comes from much more of a sensibility of loving fit, silhouette, cut, um, and also just wearing the clothing itself. So when we first met, we would talk about what was missing in the industry or I would have a garment on and I would say, you know, I love this about the garment, but I wish they did it more like this. So I wish they changed this about it or this fabric doesn't feel great. And so we just started collaborating and that's really how we work together. It's a collaboration of ideas and um, we both have a very similar aesthetic and Michael works a lot more in the construction, but we choose fabrics together, we choose colors, we look at the direction of the collection, we are all in all the fittings together. So there's a really strong sense of community between us of, um, of a lot of overlap. And through that, I've actually learned so much hands-on experience you know, through the years. And I know how to do the production, I know how to do the ordering and, um, We've learned a lot together about fabrics and and fit. I think um, I think industry learning is always more important than institutional learning. I think that things are changing rapidly with regards to technology. So um, that may be an outdated question for me, how I grew up, because I think that there's a lot that people can learn in institutions now with regards to, especially around sustainability and just production, manufacturing me methods how to reduce waste, how to solve this problem that we're having with it, within our industry of the to toxic dyes and the, and the chemicals. And so I think that there's more of a room for institutional learning to be more important. Um, and, but with that said, um, I, I still feel that there's nothing greater than experience, than mm. professional experience. Yeah, I think, I think you learn so much. I think you learn fundamentals when you go to school or when you um, are taught something in a class, but actually putting those into practice in your day-to-day -day business or understanding how to deal with a problem, you can only really know how to follow through and understand what the end result is or even to troubleshoot it before it even happens by the experience that you have. I think, um, I think we've learned a lot over the years and now, you know, trying to eliminate the problems as you go, just because you, you can see, you see the bigger picture. Brief overview of our collection for the Walmart prize is, it was, you know, 100% merino wool, Australian merino wool based. Um, and we started this collection looking back to uniforms, workwear, active sports or from the 1940s, um, because everybody wore, really wore a lot of wool back then. Um, pre-synthetic fibers um, for active endeavors. So we, we looked at what was modern 
um, with fabrications and how we could update those wardrobes. And we also looked at Scandinavian furniture and ideas that were sort of floating around at the same period of time in the 1940s. And it was very minimal and people were experimenting with getting rid of, you know, getting rid of seams and, and putting furniture together in two pieces and everything looked really modern and really forward thinking. So we tried to incorporate that into our clothes and we wanted to make a really modern collection that felt like people could move in it and wear it and be active in it. Um, but it was made out of wool. So we really wanted to give people a, a different sort of way of looking at wool. This is my favorite piece in the collection that we did for, for Woolmark um, because it has everything in it that we stand for. It has, you know, it's a modern garment. It has the silhouette um, that makes it feel new. Um, you know, the seaming details, how we engineered this garment is, has the, 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 the um, you know, the technological aspect, the, 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 the fabric is uh, very, very innovative. It's very lightweight. It almost feels like a nylon and it's the only fabric in the world right now that's 100% waterproof without having any kind of coating. It's all done through the weaving process. Um, it's lightweight, it's breathable, it's waterproof, it's wind resistant. I won't give away any trade secrets here, but they, <laughs> the, the, from what I understand how it's woven is the wool fibers are, you know, it's like they have, they're a little bit kind of crinkled. So in the weaving process, they're straightened out really tight and then the fabric is woven. And then when it is relaxed, it just kind of comes together and becomes really dense. So it doesn't allow any water in. Um, so that's, that's kind of the short answer to that question. Yeah, the then, other interesting thing about this garment is um, it's a, it's a you know, classic puffer jacket, but the, the fill, the inside fill is um, as a raw f um, wool insulate. Um, so the whole garment is very light, very warm. It is um, very durable and you know, has all the thermoregulating activities of wool. Um, so it just, yeah, it's a really great piece. It feels really new to us. Yeah, and it's interesting. It's it's very lightweight, but it's it's warming and cooling, which is what one of the fascinating pro properties about wool is. It creates its own sort of atmosphere around your body. So it mm -hmm. um, you know it sort of absorbs heat, retains it when you're warm, and then it releases it back um, as you get cold. So it keeps you warm and it keeps you cool at the same time. Yeah, the other great thing about this piece is um, we live in New York, which is bitterly cold outside and incredibly hot inside. So the other idea with this piece is that you can clip the sleeves together. And, um, you know, when you're going in shopping and you can just like throw it over your shoulder like this and just keep shopping. So without carrying the big, big jacket on you and it just, just adds like this lifestyle concept for us. So this is another one of my favorite pieces in the collection um, for a few reasons. One is that it really, it, it really doesn't feel like wool at all. It was actually inspired um, by uh, cotton gauze. So it's, it's sheer, if you can see, um, it's got a, a texture to it, uh, this beautiful texture. And we worked really closely with the mill to develop this cold water dye technique on this wool. So the dye does not penetrate 100%. It, it's, it kind of picks up in, in places um, and it really gives the feel of chambray, which is what we were looking for. We wanted, to, we wanted to make wool kind of feel like denim in the sense that you wear it every day. It's not precious. You can just throw it on and, you know, it's durable. Um, but this happens to be super lightweight and luxurious as well. But we wanted to give it that feeling and that's why we did it like this heavy contrast top stitching, which is, you know, traditionally found in denim pieces. But with that, you know, we really engineered, you know, the, the, the seaming and the tailoring um, and the silhouette of it. But the fabric itself was, was, was just really interesting to make something so lightweight and, and, and sheer, but yet, um, uh, you know, it's made out of wool. Well, this is another one of my favorite pieces <laughs> because a favorite well, it's a, pieces. It's a, it was a small collection. So, um, but this, this piece really embodies for me, you know, one of, one of the images on our inspiration board was a, a woman 
wearing um, what looked to be like a you know an old '90s Jill Sander suit, just super elegant, and beautiful, carrying a ladder. And it turns out when I looked into the, the image, uh, she was a window washer. And uh, you know to really think that that's how people really wore all walks of life and all professions. Everybody wore a suit jacket. Everybody wore wool pants, wool suits, and um, she just looks so elegant. And I wanted to like bring that into our collection. Um, so the, the the heavy top stitching, you know, the the small the eight or seven stitches per inch um, really brings out that sort of utilitarian feel of it. And we found we sourced a denim. We actually worked with a mill in Italy that created this. Um, for us, it's a broken twill, uh, which is a typical sort of denim weave. Um, it's indigo, um, but it's 100% wool. And we combine that with a wool canvas. So it's, it's almost like a, like a duck canvas um, or military grade canvas, but it's, um, you know, the color is also indigo to reference that sort of utilitarian denim feel. But it's super elegant. It's really light. It's it you know it drapes. It, um, it just has a really beautiful feel. You can travel with this. This has been all over the world the past year and a half, um, and you know it just looks like it just came off the you know the showroom floor. So it's something that travels well. It's very durable. It's wrinkle free. It's really elegant. Um, and. Yeah, I liked the I, I liked the two tone aspect of it. It's just a design element. Um, it's nothing really more than that. But again, I just really wanted to reiterate that that sort of denim feel. Um, when I say denim, it's not necessarily like jeans or Western wear, but it's more that idea of just putting on your favorite pair of clothes and wearing it every day. This this fabric we. Um, we sourced from um, a mill in Italy uh, called Laura Pianets. They're they're known for their you know traditional suiting and tailoring. It's a very old mill, um, and we found this tropical. It's a tropical weight um, wool that looks again. It looks like denim. It's a it's a yarn dye. So you see the white coming through. Um, what I love about this is it's um, seventy percent wool. It has the rest of it is a combination of linen and silk, and um, I believe that's it. And mm -hmm. it has the slub characteristic. The linen gives it this slub characteristic. So even though it's this this luxurious kind of wool and silk product, it has this kind of you know this element to it that just makes it feel like you can wear it every day. Yeah, it has like a ca day. has a casual look. It's incredibly lightweight. It's really, really soft and drapey. It's um, it's a really beautiful fabric, very special fabric. I think it's important to think about for people like people who are thinking about entering this this competition uh, down the road is that you really need to know who you are, and that goes back to uh, don't be too fast to go out and start your own brand. I think you know. Hey, it takes time to find out who you are. And then when you get into a competition, just the word competition, you can think like, mm -hmm. you can think anything really, because it's not, it's, it, it doesn't affect necessarily your sales. Um, and it's not part of, you know, it, it wasn't really part of our main brand, but for, for us and for me in particular, d just designing the collection, I really wanted to stay true to who I am and who our brand was. So I didn't necessarily want to reinvent the wheel. You know, I wanted to keep it really simple. And I think, um, it can be really easy to overthink things, um, especially when you're in a competition. And I think that, um, that, you know, simple is always better. And to just remember that it's a, it's a huge collaborative process and the deeper that we got involved in it, the collaborations, you know, from the mills, from the suppliers, from the mentors who Walmart presented with us were invaluable. I mean, we were calling these people all the time, um, to, to, you know, to learn more. And I think, you know, no matter how far along you are in this industry, there's always more to learn. But I think the biggest thing is just really, you know, I think innovation is important. I think all of that is important, but you need to do it within your realm of who you are. You know, that's, that's it. And I, and I think that's not an easy thing to grasp. You know, it's really something mm -hmm. that people, 
uh, tend to go off the deep end, you know, and, and to kind of bite off more than, than you can chew. Um, so to do something simple and do it really well is better than, than trying to tackle a big project and not, you know, not being able to, to give yourself fully to it. Communicating the sustainability part of our brand is challenging as a small brand. Um, we try to do it a lot through social media, through our Instagram, um, creating some little stories on our website. Um, but the great thing that we've done, I think, for this collection with the Walmart collection is we've made on the, on the hang tags as a QR code. And um, we'll probably put those up on the website as well. So when you, when you hover your phone over the QR code, it'll lead you to a page um, where we have a 3D model circulating of the garment and um, all the attributes of the wall and special design aspects will be highlighted um, to the consumer. So they can go to any of the garments in the store, they can hover the phone over the QR code and all that information will come up to them. So that's that's been something that we've been working on for a while and we may take that um, into the main collection as well. It's just, it is um, it is challenging, you know, explaining to people about the sustainability side of it. You know, our thought process really is design first and then the sustain and the discovery that it's also sustainable and it also has a really strong ethical background to the to the garment is is like we think of it as a bonus because at some point everybody needs to do this and everybody needs to bring these practices into the forefront and um, hopefully people will seek out brands that are doing this and are already sort of consciously changing um, what they're doing and um, I think just the consumer demand for it would help all of us to be able to sort of move forward. Yeah, and I think it's, you know, for us, it's just important that we're doing it, mm -hmm. you know, and it, and if it's, it's almost like a quiet messaging. Um, we're, we're trying to we're trying to communicate more with the QR codes and, you know, online and, and um, I don't know that we've done much through social media, but we we will, I think push that message more but um you know we're just you know i think that this is a brand we we want we want to be doing it and if people sort of find out after the fact they buy something and then they find out you know after the fact that it happens to be you know sourced from something that's you know naturally recurring resource and um sustainable i think that's even better we'll be excited about in the future i think well i think that i'm, I'm really inspired by the, the technology around sustainability. I mean, I, that's that's a really, I think, a relatively new discussion. I think there's a lot of people that are jumping on the bandwagon. Um, I think it's a really good bandwagon to be a part of. I think some people are, um, you know, doing or more effective than other people. But I think it's a really um, there's a lot happening that that I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, experiencing and 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 bring into our, our collection. Yeah, I think the accessibility is something that I'm really excited about. Um, as a small business, um, five, 10 years ago, just being able to do something like change our hang tags, change our labels into um, you know, recycled materials, um, was, the minimums are huge. And now we're able to do that. And I think just that is a very exciting thing that more people will be able to, to join this program and we, everybody can make a little bit of a difference. Yeah, there was a book I read, I think, 15 years ago called Cradle to Cradle. And it, it talked, it was sort of like this pipe dream about business being able to, um, you know, start something at the beginning of life and then return it to the end of life. And all these years later, you know, it was, it, it's, it's happening. And then we're, we're experimenting with the, with the Walmart collection by eliminating all of the waste and being having a having a resource that we can take back garments at the end of life and return it into new fabrics. I think that's pretty um, amazing. I think it's only going to get better. Mm -hmm.